So I was about to make another bullshit sound design tutorial. And then I realized, what the f am I doing? Sometimes I forget that I can actually provide a perspective that 99% of these other YouTube channels for music production can't provide. And it's not a knock on them. I watch these channels. I learn from these channels. It's just my perspective is completely different. I've worked with 600 plus artists over the past 10 years and seen so many of them go from the same position you might be in as a beginner, a bedroom producer with bigger goals, bigger dreams, meaning signing to some of the bigger labels, playing some of the bigger festivals. I've seen this shit happen numerous times and I don't talk about it. So what I wanna do today is go over some of the things I've learned over the past 10 years working with all of our students and seeing so many of them go from bedroom to literally EDC. We had three students this year play EDC. One of the cooler things about that too is they all make different types of music. The advice I'm here to lend you today, this is bigger than genres. This is bigger than the doll you work in. This is bigger than production techniques. So what I wanna do is go through five specific things I've learned from these students' success. What connects them? What are those similarities? What are those common denominators? So for the first one, I don't want you to think this is me doing some motivational bullshit. I genuinely mean what I'm about to say. You can do this. You can do it! Whether you have a busy work-life schedule, I've seen students in our program have that same experience and do it. We've had so many students having multiple jobs while taking our program. Some of them are in school, studying to become doctors. Taylor Torrance was literally a lawyer while taking our program. He was in the suit, he was in the tie. You've probably heard this story before, but it's the truth. That wasn't an excuse. That's not what was holding him back. He still was able to do this. Now, if you don't have a lot of time to work on music, maybe one day a week, that's okay. Most students we work with, it's a similar scenario. It's not about how much time you have. It's about what you do with your time. You need to be prepared. You need to value your own time. And when you sit down to work, you have to have goals for every single session. And if it's working on music, it shouldn't be working on music. The goal should be to finish music. That's ultimately what's going to get you from here to here. Now, the second thing I've learned over time here is those who are advanced are just really damn good at the fundamentals. There are no tricks to this. No way. There are no secrets. Not a chance. 10 years in, you're not gonna learn that hidden production technique that you haven't found yet. Oh no, we suck again. That's not how it works. Those who are really good are really good at the basics and the fundamentals. And let's just step out of music for a second. Take an athlete. The best athletes are really good at doing those basic things and they just get more out of it. Take Steph Curry, best shooter in the NBA. Steph, a deep three. What advanced thing is he doing with his shot that no one else knows or no one else has figured out? Nothing, he's just spent countless hours perfecting the fundamentals, his jump shot. So if you really wanna know what moves the needle and what you should be doubling down on, putting all your stock into, it's songwriting, arrangement, and then as we shift into the production side, volume is the most important thing, becoming a master at leveling your sounds just with volume. And then if we take a step below, we will go to EQ, compression, and spatial mixing. Become a master at those and the quality of your music will drastically improve. So for the next one, I want you to really focus on what you actually can control, and that is your attitude and your process. What you can't control are the outcomes. Let's talk about attitude. There's a great video that I'm gonna link right up here that Justin has done about attitude. I highly suggest you watch that at some point, but attitude is everything. If you're an asshole, no one's going to want to work with you. It's as simple as that. If you have an ego, no one's going to want to work with you. It's as simple as that. And when I look at attitude within Cosmic Academy, sure, there are students that are already doing this at a high level. You know, Charles D, who's with Prida and, and on tour with Eric Prids. You have the three that played EDC this year, Nostalgic, Spexy, and Taylor. All of them have A-plus attitudes. I love all of them. They are great human beings. And then when you look into our group with the other artists, 600 plus of them, we could almost predict their success based on their attitude. They are some of the nicest human beings I've ever met. They've become friends of mine. They will be lifelong friends of mine. 
And their success is directly related to their attitude and their future success will be directly related to their attitude. Attitude is everything you can control that. You could be an asshole or you could be a really nice human being. The next thing you should be focusing on is your process. And what I mean by that is don't get enamored with the outcome. You are going to face a ton of rejection and it's normal. It's part of this. You can't control whether people are going to like your song or not. You could work as hard as you want on the next song. It doesn't matter. It could still be shit. If you were able to write a hit every time, you would be doing it. I would be doing it. Everyone would be doing it. Everybody's doing it. We can't. So instead, let's focus on what we can control, which is the process. You can control finishing a lot of music. Now, if you finish a lot of music, you will also naturally be able to find quality in that quantity. Go finish 20 songs. I will guarantee one of them is better than the other 19. Now you have quality through quantity, and this can improve your odds of success, but that doesn't guarantee anything. You still can't control whether a label is going to say yes or no, whether a talent buyer is gonna say yes or no, or whether your audience is gonna like your song or not like your song. Zero control, don't stress it, focus on what you can control, and that is just finishing a lot of music, building your brand, developing yourself as an artist. All right, moving forward, let's get back to a little bit more of the music making stuff, and this is going to be that your song is way more important than the mix. I've learned this on a personal level. I've seen so many of our students experience this. Your mix means nothing if the song sucks. You blew it! And there's a lot of people nowadays that can mix incredible music. That becomes the norm. That becomes what labels expect. No one's gonna reward you for a quality mix. My mom doesn't care about how clean your mix is. I my mom cares about is your song catchy the average listener like my mom cares about is your song catchy will they remember it can they hum it will it be stuck in their head that has nothing to do with a mix down so if you really want to start taking your music to the next level put the mix aside for a second focus on the song first get good songwriting and arrangement done first before you stress a mix it's much easier to mix a great song it's very hard to mix and produce a shitty song. Because no matter what sounds you choose, the idea sucks. This is something we even focus on during our program, where week one, we emphasize just how important writing and arrangement is. We don't even talk mixing. We don't even get into it because that stuff comes after the great idea. Before we move on, I wanna give you a funny little thing I always explain to the students during the class, just to show you how sound design and mix down are not that important. I'm gonna name one song, and as soon as I say it, you're gonna know the exact song I'm talking about, and it will be stuck in your head the whole day. The sound design is shit. The mix down, who, no one has ever judged the mix down on this song, I can promise you that. You ready? Baby Shark. It's just a catchy song. So for the fifth and final perspective, I wanna talk about community and the power of community. Doing this alone sucks. I think you could relate to that. I definitely can, most people can. Being surrounded by other like-minded artists is literally a cheat code. So much of the success we have here at Cosmic with the students is not a direct reflection of Justin and I being the world's greatest teachers and mentors. Being dead serious about that, like that's not what it is. It's the fact that these people in the group, these individuals are unbelievable at supporting each other. They help each other with feedback every single week. Three times a week they get into a room and they're giving each other critical feedback. Now, you might have Discord, you might have Reddit for that, but it's a bunch of avatars. You don't know who's behind that avatar. And most times they're roasting your track. I hate that shit. Like feedback is roasting your track. No, it's not. It's helping you get the most out of it. And in order to do that, it helps to have a relationship with the person, to know who they are, to know what their background is. And if what they're even telling you makes sense, or if it's coming with the right intention, do they want to see you win? It's hard to do that if you don't have a trusted community. Now I'm extremely spoiled and biased because I have Cosmic Academy here. Like we have 600 artists who are 
dope as shit. They're amazing individuals. We get into feedback every single week. It's a live environment. We're giving critical feedback to one another and it's not just a pat on the back, cool song. Like it's legit shit. How can I help you make your song better? I understand not everyone has this and it's tough without it because I see what an advantage it is when you do have this. Now with the community it goes beyond feedback. You should have a community where people support your music, where they want to collaborate with you. Like collaboration is exponential growth. There's no one way to do this, right? It's music, it's art, it's a creative process. Seeing how other people do it is the quickest way to learn. Like even me personally, doing these one-on-ones with the students, going into their DAWs, you have learned a shit ton by seeing how they do things. I learn every single day working with other artists and it's such a huge part of what we do. I highly, highly, highly recommend finding a community. It doesn't have to be ours. Sure, I'm biased. I think ours is the best of course, but it doesn't have to be ours. Find a community with like-minded people who are sharing the same values as you, who look at this the same way you do, who treat it with the same importance and work ethic and drive that you do. That's really what matters the most. So to wrap things up, I hope this provided some value today, more so than a bullshit tutorial. Please let me know in the comments if I succeeded at this. There's also gonna be a subscribe button below me right now. Be sure to click it if you're not subscribed to our page. We put out daily videos. And until I see you in the next one, good luck, go work on some music, and I'll catch you soon.